أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه لأنه خالق ونستغفره هو الله سبحانه وتعالى رب العالمين ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال حبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم قل أمنت بالله ثم استقيم أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم We praise and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this glorious day of Yawm al a blessed day for the Muslims. And we thank him for the opportunity to assemble here in his house to worship him. For there are many more in the world over who desires to be sitting in the house of Allah in peace and tranquility, worshipping him, but do not have the opportunity to. As we assembled here, we must not forget those who are dying currently. Make dua for them. Those that the bombs are falling on them that the bullets are piercing their bodies. Those who are sick and unable to get off their beds to come and join in the worship. Today, inshallah, I want to mention a few words about taqwa. Taqwa seems to evade the Muslim Ummah. This taqwa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has repeatedly spoken about in his book seems to have evaded the Muslims totally. To enter into this deen we have to declare that there is no one but Allah and that his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final prophet in that he transmitted the Quran to us. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attached 
four more pillars to this pillar. And all of them has to do with ibadah. The salah, the zakah, the salm, and the hajj. All of these he has made compulsory for us. It is not conditional, except the Hajj, that if we can afford to. And he, Rabbana subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Creator, knows best what we require to function as the human beings he desires us to function as. And so, continuously in his book, he keeps repeating. This is the beauty of the book of Allah, and this was also the habit of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that when he spoke to the companions, he spoke the same way that Allah spoke to us. That he will speak to us in a manner as if we are children. Repeating over and over his commandments so that we pay attention to it. And Nabi used to do the same thing to the companions that when he wants to make a point, he will repeat it over and over and over. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The month of Ramadan just left us just left us and with that the Muslims left us they just moved off and next year when the month of Ramadan comes around again we will see the Muslims and greet the Muslims and this is a way of life for many of us since I was a child this is what I grew up this is what I saw and perhaps this is what I learned, and perhaps this is what I practice. And so today, I am heading into old age, and this is what I'm seeing. So the habit is there. Prior to Ramadan, I attended many lectures. During Ramadan, I attended lectures. And the shiuks will emphasize, they would emphasize that during this month of Ramadan, there is immense barakah to be obtained. And so they will tell us, recite more Quran, you will obtain barakah. Pray more salah, you will obtain barakah. Be more vigilant you will obtain more barakah. And so all the talks were centered around how to increase barakah. And so the Muslims, of course, takes lessons from these things. And they attended well, and they recited the Quran, and they pray the Taraweeh, and they pray the Hajjad, and they increase in their ibadat, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not withhold from his promise. They receive barakah. And so at the end of Ramadan, they grabbed their bags of barakah and headed home. And so the next 11 months, they will do whatever. And then Ramadan comes around again. And so they will come back for another grab bag of barakah. But the one thing I did not hear much about was that this concept of fasting to attain taqwa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made that conditional. It's conditional there. And the reason why it's conditional, because all of us perhaps will fast. But all of us 
will not attain taqwa. Whatever we do, plus extra, we will obtain our barakah. As long as it is done with the correct niyyah. But this taqwa, it is not for all of us. In that as soon as the Ramadan ends, we gone. We head home with our bag of barakah. Why is this taqwa so important? And why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it compulsory? We are the only people he made compulsory that we must worship him five times per day. That we must pay the zakah. That we must keep the fast. It's not a voluntary thing. We make the hajj, the pilgrimage, if we can afford to. Because he desires for us that we have this taqwa. And this taqwa, if we look into his book, there are umpteen ayahs that speaks about this taqwa and why we should possess this taqwa. It is for me sometimes baffling. Sometimes brother will come to me and they will point out an ayah. The ayah will have something to do with Nabi Yusuf. Or the ayah will have something to do with Nabi Isa. Or one of the incidents that are mentioned in the Quran. But very rarely a brother will come to me and sit down to discuss what is called the Ayatul Ahkam. The ruling ayahs, the ayahs of the Quran that really concerns our life, the instructions in the book of Allah, the instructions that tells us how to live our life. Sometimes it gets a bit annoying to me when I have to tell them how much time you spent behind this, why didn't you spend this time behind this ayah? That this ayah would have taught you something that is beneficial in terms of how to live your life. Problem is today, Muslims are not familiar with the Quran. The Quran is a book of barakah. And so we will take it and we will recite it. Why? Because we want to obtain barakah. And the guidance that is inside evades us continuously. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي هُدًا لِلْمُتَّكِينَ This huda لِلْمُتَّكِينَ If we look into this ayah, and there are many explanations for it, the book of Allah is a guidance for mankind. But if we look into this ayah, we can understand from it that only those who have taqwa, based on the statement of Allah, will pay heed to his book. Only those who have taqwa will pay heed to his book, will use his book as guidance. And so, when we read this ayah or recite it, we should ponder upon it a bit. Do I make this book my book of guidance? Do I live my life according to this book? Am I from the muttaqin? A couple of ayahs I pulled out to point out to us the benefits of taqwa. Why is it so essential that the Muslims should possess taqwa? And the absence of that taqwa today is the reason why we are in this despicable condition we find ourselves in where we are laughed at by everyone. 
the world over. It is the absence of this taqwa in our lives. This taqwa that continuously evades us. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this book. وَلَكَدْ وَصَيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابِ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ تَقْوَى That he has reminded us that this taqwa is not something that he made upon the Muslims alone. This was condition that he had given to those before us. The people continuously from Abuna Adam alayhi salam all the way through the history until today and it will continue until the day of Yawm al Qiyamah that this taqwa should be paid attention to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ يُسْرَى My brothers and my sisters in this world that we are living in today how many of us face difficulties how many of us are worrying we go to bed worrying we wake up worrying we worried about the bills we worry about the jobs we worry about the family we are warriors we are worrying all the time and here is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us he's giving us a way out that if we have taqwa, may yatakillah, he will make us, yaj'alluhu min amrihi yusra, he will make our affairs easy. What can we ask for? What can we ask for that our Creator is saying to us? That if we possess this taqwa, he will make our affairs easy. Ask why the affairs of the Muslims are so difficult today. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not lie. The absence of this taqwa in our lives is what is making it so difficult. Listen to what he says. وَمَنْ يَتَّكِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَعْزُكُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us that if we have this taqwa, if we possess this taqwa, when we are in a difficult situation, which happens to us over and over, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us a way out. Makhrajan. He, Rabbana subhanahu wa ta'ala, will give us a way out from our difficulties. If we possess this taqwa, and he also continue here to say, Yarzuku. That he will make our sustenance. And those of us who had this experience can relate to this. That when we are in a difficult situation. Difficult. We don't know where to turn. Then somehow something happens. And there is a solution. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. That if we have this taqwa, that he will make our sustenance come from a direction that we never think about or thought about. It will just come to us. I experienced this, and many of us sitting there here experience this. The difficult times when we don't have a way out and then suddenly someone turns up and they give us a way out. And this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and listen to what he says. Ya yuhalladhina amanu in tattaqullah yaj'al lakum furqanan wa yukaffirankum sayyi'atikum rabbana subhanahu wa ta'ala This is a problem with many Muslims today that we have the book of Allah and we have the collection of the ahadith from Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but we don't have an understanding of our deen we don't have an understanding of our deen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here that he will give us for Qadan, some Fasreen says Makhraja. But he will give us this opening, this understanding. And I call it a thinking process because taqwa has to do with a thinking process, a consciousness of the mind. And so we will obtain this consciousness of the mind that we will see things clearly. We will make the right decision. And when the time comes, we will choose or select the right way. And the last ayah I want to mention to you all. Ya yuhladina amanu taqullah wa amanu bi rasuluhi yu'tikum kiflain mi rahmatihi wa yaj'al lakum nuran tamshuna bihi wa yagfir lakum. Rabbana subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here that if we fear him, if we fear him, he will give us a double portion of reward. Kiflai. A double portion of reward. And he says, يَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ نُورًا نُورًا تَمْشُونَ بِهِ He will give us a light. He will give us a light. This is the consciousness that I'm speaking about. That we will walk straight with this light. Nuran. That we will walk with this light. And all of this will elevate our life. Why would we not want these benefits from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why would we want to turn our backs on what Allah is offering? And this is what happened today. That the Muslims have walked away, turned their backs on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has offered us. And when He lifts His hand from us, because He has, the conditions are all here. The conditions have to be fulfilled first from us before Allah looks over us. And we are not fulfilling those conditions. We do not possess this taqwa. It continuously evades us. And this is why we find today that we are in this situation that we find ourselves in. My brothers and my sisters, the acts of ibadah are here to bring us to a consciousness. And if we do it just for the sake of doing it, we will never reap the harvest of it. It will never reflect in our lives. It will never change us. Day in and day out we will go about our business business as usual and our conditions will never change and as we see the world over little by little the shame is spreading upon us the disrespect is there for us and everyone at any time feels up to it they disrespect us And we can shout all we want, make all the noise, burn down all the buildings, do all the things, but that disrespect is not going to go away unless we stand up and acquire this taqwa.
as the condition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed above us before he turns towards us. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us. I pray that he opens our heart and he fills it with taqwa. I pray that when we pray that he accepts our prayer and our dua. I pray for his forgiveness. And I pray that on the day of Yawm al he does not expose us. And he does not shame us. And enter us into Jannah with our noble messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره اللهم صل على حبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم My brothers and my sisters as we turn our attention towards the news we see the turmoil over a film and now Others have added to this. In France, more characters, more. Uh, I think there's a magazine that, 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 that printed some cartoons disrespecting Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Muslims responded, and today, today alone in Pakistan, the body count is up to 15. That doesn't include deaths from other countries. It doesn't include the ambassador that died in Libya, as well as the other Americans that died there. I was following the primary for the Republican nomination. And every time they wanted a boost, in the polls, they would say something despicable about Muslims. And so they were tumbling over each other to see how to boost their numbers by coming down hard on the Muslims. A horrible film was made, but the question we should ask ourselves how would Rasulullah react to such a film? If we look into his life, we will see how many times he was insulted. What they did to him. From the entrails, what they did to him. From garbage, the Jewish man that continuously dumped garbage on his doorstep. And so one day he comes home, he doesn't see the garbage, and he inquires where is the man because the garbage is not there. And so they told him that he's sick so he couldn't come to dump the garbage. On the doorstep, and what did Nabi did? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to visit the Jewish man. He went to visit him. And the Jewish man couldn't believe it. And he says, you come to visit me. You come to visit me even though I was doing these things to you. And so he made shahada. How many incidents I can stand here and quote to you over and over. The example from our noble messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How should we react to this? Fifteen Muslims killed today alone, only in Pakistan. Who are the losers of this? How is the world viewing us? Are we the people that we are claiming to be? We keep saying Islam is a religion of peace. We keep saying that Islam is a religion of knowledge and that we are people of knowledge. 
When the first revelation came down, Ikra, to recite, to read, not to believe. Those who preceded us knew and understand this. They understood this and they lived by it. But we look into the scholars of past. Today we have windows and bright lights. Where did this come from? The formula for clear glass was established by a Muslim, Abbas ibn Firnas, for clear glass. Those of us who are wearing the spectacle, the formula for that is from a Muslim. In the ninth century, Abbas ibn Firnas, Cordoba. And so we, the glass that we can see out on the road through our cars, that is from the Muslims, the formula. Abbas ibn Firnas was a man whom we can call the first person in flight. Not here, not in Europe. He was the first person to build a contraption and used it for flying. And so the West recognized that. Of course, they gave him a Latinized name, Ayman Firnas. But they recognize his good work. And they name a crater on the moon after him. And there are many, many parts of the moon that are named after Muslims, but we don't know. Many of it are Latinized names. Many stars are named after Muslims, but they are Latinized names that we don't know. And so Abbas ibn Firnas, he built a water clock that is there unto now in Cordoba, Spain, if you go to visit, that tells the time accurately, exists on to now. Our greatness is not built on shouting and shooting and killing and destroying. The whole of humanity today benefits from the Muslims. Benefits from the Muslims. A few weeks ago, I was, at, I was in Washington and I went for, to see the exhibition there. And they were showing some of the achievements of the Muslims. But this is who we are. We are not a people who explode bombs every day, killing people, slaughtering people. We are not a people who go around shooting and, and murdering. We are not a people that is, when we turn on the news, we see this nonsense that's happening. That's not who we are. That's not the legacy that our noble messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left for us. We are a people of knowledge. We establish so many things that you are not aware of. That launch the advancement of this world. That without these achievements from the Muslims, the world would not have been the way it is today. We are the first in flight. Paper, yes, it was founded in, in China, but the Muslims took it because they were not able to reproduce it. They were not able to reproduce it on the scale where they can make books. Muslim took it. That still exists on to today. The first book ever written on paper exists today on to now. It's done by Muslims. We gave the world this paper that we take so common. Toothbrush. Something as simple as toothbrush. We are a people of greatness. Not what you see on the news and the nonsense that is expressed. My brothers and my sisters. Stand up. Represent who we are. Our dean is a dean of knowledge. Not of ignorance. Learn who we are. The Jews who are so much our enemy today, which they're not supposed to be, in the Inquisition, we are the ones who saved them. Know that. 
tell those who stand up against us. When the Christians were killing and slaughtering them in the Inquisition, what did the Caliph did? Made a special order for the Muslims to go and rescue the Jews and took them to Muslim lands, give them property, give them land, give them money. We saved them. We need to know this so we can stand up and remind them who we are. We need to let our children know who we are so that they can walk with their heads upright. They don't have to bow down to anyone. We can tell humanity what we did for them. And we can be great again. But we can only do so when we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Truly turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. رَبَّنَا أَتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَكِنَا أَذَابَ النَّارِ وَعَكِمَ الصَّلَةً بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر